Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. Now, I have done other videos on our channel talking about the great resignation and why millions of our fellow Americans are actually quitting. Folks, the unemployment rate in our country is down to 4.8%, which is the lowest since the start of the pandemic. But that's not because people are back to work. Think about this for a second. That's because people are actually quitting their jobs and potentially looking for new work. So, in this video, let's explore the six reasons why Americans are not returning to work. This is based on this article that you see on your screen from CNBC. Six reasons why Americans are not returning to work. And by the way, you'll get a link to this resource in the description section below. So what exactly is happening? Well, folks, millions, millions of our fellow Americans have either quit their jobs or have simply decided not to return to their old jobs. And now the number of job openings are almost 11 million. Yep, that's right. Almost 11 million job openings and, and job growth is actually slowing down because people are not getting back to work. Even though federal unemployment benefits ended nationwide over the Labor Day weekend and in 26 states they actually ended much sooner. A lot of evidence now suggests that those benefits never played a big role in sidelining workers. There are other factors at work and these factors include health risks related to COVID, early retirement, duties related to caregiving, built up savings and other factors. Let's just jump right in to what is happening in the state of our economy right now. Now, it may seem that the Delta variant is slowly behind us, that the economy is opening gradually and that things should be back to normal. But the fact is there are still 5 million fewer jobs than before the pandemic, okay? But job openings are at record highs and hourly pay has actually gone up in some sectors by almost 10%. In the past year. Now, again, federal unemployment benefits ended, but they did not prevent people from returning to work. The problem here is that job growth has actually slowed down in September after surging in spring and early summer. So what is happening? According to Diane Swank, who's the chief economist at accounting and advisory firm Grant Thornton, she said this, if you had told me we'd have millions of workers still on the sidelines and have wages going up because people couldn't find workers, you could knock me over with a feather. Well, folks, there is new evidence that there are many complex factors that are actually leading to people quitting or not going back to work. Let's start with the first factor. As you guessed it, COVID. Now, people are concerned about getting sick with this disease and therefore people are not going back to work. There is a direct relationship between a surge in cases and people going back to work at restaurants. In other words, when there's a surge, people simply don't go back to work at restaurants. That's why certain industries like travel, leisure, entertainment and hospitality have taken a big hit as far as being able to hire employees is concerned. In fact, job growth actually slowed down in August and September as cases were spiking because of Delta. Now, here's a quote from Daniel Zhao, who's the chief economist at the job site Glassdoor. The September jobs report is a reminder that the pandemic is still what controls our recovery. The pandemic is still keeping workers out of the labor force. In fact, 4.3 million individuals actually quit their jobs in the month of August. Frontline workers, in other words, workers who actually engage with customers face to face who don't have who don't have the ability to essentially work remotely in front of a computer like some of us do frontline workers in sectors like restaurants bars and retail they actually quit at the highest rates and this is a direct result of the fear associated with in person work towards the end of a pandemic no one no one wants to get COVID from a customer who didn't bother to get vaccinated or didn't bother to put on a mask in fact job growth should pick up as the cases go down. But folks, it's too, it's too soon to tell because this is because our recovery is uneven across the country. Now, second factor, early retirements. Early retirements have actually reduced the pool of available workers. Now, older adults are at a higher risk of severe illness and death from this pandemic. Now, they've decided to start drawing social security and live off their savings instead of taking a risk with their health, with their life at work. Grandparents have also decided to watch their grandkids because there are problems with childcare for working parents. Here's a quote from Aaron Sojourner, who's a labor economist and associate professor at the University of Minnesota. 
all of those things would push especially hard on people in their 60s to come out of the labor force. Now, here's an interesting fact. Compared to two years ago, there were an additional 3.6 million people out of the labor force in September. In other words, these are people who are like, I don't need a job right now. In fact, people aged 55 and older account for 89% of the increase of people who are not looking for a job. In other words, older individuals are like, well, I'm done working. Here's another quote from Sojourner. I think we should assume they're never coming back, but for now, they are not back. What's the next factor? Care responsibilities. Needing to take care of children or seniors is making it very difficult for some workers, especially individuals who cannot work from home. It's making it tough for them to return to work. Now, many schools have reopened for in-person learning, and this honestly makes things easier. I have a six-year-old son, and he's, you know, he's, he's back in school, so this is a good thing. But the problem is, when there's an outbreak and it leads to a quarantine or it leads to remote learning, that puts a lot of pressure on parents. Here's a quote from Daniel Zhao. That uncertainty will make it difficult for workers, especially in frontline jobs. Now, there are 336,000 people right now who said they are not working because they have to care for someone who is sick or elderly. In fact, in September, there were a total of 1.8 million people not working because in total, this is the total throughout the country, 1.8 million people had to care for someone who was sick with COVID. And on top of that, there were 336,000 more people who said they could not work because they were caring for an elderly person. Pretty incredible. If you think about this for a second. Now, the next factor, savings. People have more savings. Households in all income categories have been able to have higher savings during the pandemic. Number one, because of stimulus checks and unemployment benefits. Number two, because there was someone in the family who was working. And number three, There was no place to spend the money on. Now, cash balances were up 50% for the typical household in July 2021 relative to two years ago, according to the J.P. Morgan Chase Institute. Here's a quote from Fiona Gregg, who is the co-president of the Institute. People might feel with an extra buffer on hand that they have a little more time to wait. They don't have to find a job at this moment. This is very interesting, folks. And also, it's very difficult to get people back to work. Here's another quote from Daniel Zhao, the senior economist at Glassdoor. Getting people back into jobs isn't something you can do at the snap of a finger. Like I mentioned earlier also, folks, families have less places to spend money with entertainment and menus closed during the crisis. In fact, the balances, the cash balances of low-income families are up 70%. And those of higher income families are up 35% over the past two years. But this extra cash is not going to last forever, especially with the holiday season coming up. In fact, higher income households have the most savings, more than $4,000, relative to lower income earners who have $1,000 in their checking account, according to the Institute. Now, the next factor is wages. There may be record job openings, But that doesn't mean that businesses are paying more wages. Wages have only risen by about $1 an hour or 4.5% in the past year. And basically, there's an increased demand for labor, but this is not enough to attract workers. Here's a quote from Sojourner. That's more likely to be the case if a job has deteriorated in quality, whether because of health risks, increased hours, or other inconveniences like dealing with unruly customers who oppose mask requirements. Now, there's also the competing problem of childcare. Here's another quote from Sojourner. The big question is, why are companies not paying more, bidding up wages, and working conditions improving fast enough to pull people off the sidelines? And here's the final factor, folks. It's going to take some time. This is not going to happen overnight. A lot of unemployed workers have had enough time to reevaluate their priorities to ask themselves, hey, where do I want to work? Many are considering switching careers, learning new skills, potentially even starting their own business, and, and maybe even relocating to find a new job. There's also a new mismatch between what workers want and what companies expect. In fact, many companies expect their workers to return to work full-time in person, which is not what workers want. And this is another challenge. And some of them have moved on to other work. And the ones who have not been able to get back to work, they are now, these low-wage earners are now part of the permanently unemployed. They are part of the long-term unemployed. In other words, they've been unemployed for six months or more. In other words, the low-wage earners, the most vulnerable amongst us, 
might find themselves out of work for six months or more. And this can lead to a chain reaction of other problems, including desperation, psychological problems and crime. Thank you so much for watching. Please click like, please click subscribe, please enable notifications. I appreciate you. A ton of effort goes into the creation, the production, the editing and the delivery of these videos. Please click like, please click subscribe, please enable notifications. Also follow me on Twitter. This right here is my Twitter feed. You'll be able to keep up with all the latest news stories on Twitter. Again, thank you so much for watching. My Twitter handle is ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.